peaches, it's Sherba. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video. I know it's Thursday. Hold up, hold up. I know we normally do. Am I the dramas on a Monday? But Valentine's Day is coming up. And I found this little article of Valentine's Day dramas and I was like, oh, we should totally go through this together. What is your take on Valentine's Day? I, I could take it or leave it. I love the sentiment. Much like with everything, I don't like it when it goes too far and there's like pressures and expectations to make you do things that you don't particularly want to do. You know, some people take it super seriously though. And there are some people that take it too seriously as I'm sure we will all see. But before we dive deep into the roses <laughs> and the chocolates and such, I want to say a huge thanks to Wild for sponsoring today's video. Have you heard of Wild? Oh, mate, Wild are one of those buys that makes you feel like a good egg because they're such good eggs, you know? Their team is on a mission to shake up the throwaway culture of everyday bathroom products and replace them with refillable ones that actually work. Their deodorants and washers have no single-use plastic and come in cute premium reusable cases with compostable refills and while they're powered by plants they're vegan they're cruelty free and get this they have saved over 200 tons of single-use plastic from landfill how amazing is that and wild have brought out for valentine's a new deodorant of love with a scent of love rose petal Oh my goodness. Firstly, how freaking cute is this? It is so adorable. It's perfect travel size for being on the go. Being a brown girly, there's no marks left on my skin. I feel smooth, I feel wonderful. And the smell? It's giving rose. It's giving hints of like orange blossom. It's giving heaven, guys. My armpits, they smell like heaven. As you know, we are all about self-love here on the Shaba channel. And these deodorants with natural ingredients are a great way to love your body whilst also doing good for the world. And the fact that it's natural does not compromise how effective it is. We are talking 24 hour odor protection, moisturizing, good smells. What's not to love? So maybe this Valentine's you wanna show some love to yourself, to the earth, maybe to someone special that you wanna gift this baby to. If you wanna pick up one of these little gifts of love, you can use my code SHARPA20 for 20% off. But you may wanna get a wiggle on because the code doesn't last too long. You can use a link downstairs in the description box that is on screen or oop, this little QR code right here. Meanwhile, I'm gonna continue smelling of roses as we go fishing for some Valentine's drama. Let's go. Am I the drama for getting my girlfriend sneakers for Valentine's Day? Do you know, I would love sneakers for Valentine's Day. <laughs> I need to proof face all of this with the fact that Valentine's Day, many dates, I forget. I have ADHD. I'm not very good with dates, okay? Everything has to go in my calendar. If it's in my calendar, it has to go in twice, three times, and I need to set myself some form of alert and often put it on my to-do list. And even then there's like a 50% chance that I'll remember the day thing, unless it's like all consuming in my mind. And then I'm sitting in a chair like, it's Valentine's Day, it's Valentine's Day. I need to do something Valentine's Day. It's so annoying. Neurodivergence aside, I think Jamie and I also just don't place like the biggest importance on it. We'll do a takeaway, but we don't do gifts. I don't judge people that do gifts. I think sneakers are a great gift. I got a pair of sneakers. Sneakers are just trainers, right? In American, American language, American words. Sneakers. I got sneakers for Christmas and I was so happy with them. They're beautiful. So let's see what the problem is here. Yeah. My girlfriend and I have been dating for a few months now. I'm employed full time and she's at university and she's also a major sneakhead. I love that. I know a sneakerhead. I didn't know that time existed, but now that I do, I see you sneakerheads. I see you. <laughs> so for Valentine's Day, I thought I'd get her a pair of sneakers that she's been eyeing up and saving for. This is cute. This is cute. I left work around lunchtime and I immediately went to her place. When I got there, we exchanged gifts. I'd also gotten her flowers and chocolates. Bougie, bougie. At first she was super thrilled, but the thrill quickly faded when we were heading out on our date. She said that the gift was incomplete. And when I asked what she meant, she said that Valentine's gifts are supposed to be jewelry or plush toys or something that she can cuddle daily. Is that a thing? I mean, could you cuddle a shoe? I could cuddle a shoe for sure. You don't want to know, you don't want to know the shoes that I'm looking at right now. I'm, I'm gonna show you the shoe. <laughs> so short. Yes, yes they are over jean slippers. Yes, this is what I saw when I looked at the side and spoke about cuddling shoes. These are totally cuddle worthy. You could totally cuddle a shoe. Over jean side, I think this is a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't realize that gifts were supposed to be like prescribed. I've heard of like anniversary milestone gifts, right? Being like, hey, year one, paper. Year two, cotton or whatever. Year 10, fluid. I don't know, cubic zircon, I'm forgetting the name of jewels, a diamond, a sapphire, whatever it is, or something. There's traditions, but even then you don't need to stick to them. I have never ever heard for Valentine's Day, I was just gonna call it Vampire Day. <laughs> for Valentine's Day, it must be, what'd you say, a cuddly toy or jewelry? You can't cuddle jewelry. This is odd. I've definitely heard of like flowers and chocolates. There's like a norm, right? But you've got flowers and chocolates 
and sneakers. Let's read on, because I'm mighty confused. I was a little confused, says OP. I wonder why. I asked if she didn't like the gift. She said she loved it, but it wasn't a Valentine's Day gift. The conversation quickly developed into an argument about what's appropriate for Valentine's gifts. My opinion was that anything that was heartfelt and considerate was okay. She basically said that there were appropriate gifts and sneakers, no matter how nice, no matter how much she loved them, wasn't one of them. I thought the idea of gifts, right, was to do something nice for someone you love. I thought the idea of gifts was that you said, hey, I put thought into this. I thought you would like this. This is what you want. What if people don't want a cuddly toy? I've never heard of something more ridiculous than you need to have jewelry or cuddly toys for Valentine's Day. Has anyone else heard this rule where like it must be within this remit of gifts? Let's read on. I apologize for the gift. You what? Why? <laughs> I'm so confused. But she said it wasn't enough. She wanted a human sized bear that cost more than the sneaker, by the way. I said I couldn't afford that at the moment, but she was adamant I could take the sneakers back for a refund and then get the bear. But she basically shut that down saying she loved her sneakers and it was unacceptable to take them back. At this point, I was at a loss and said if she loved her gift, What's the problem? Enlighten me, please, OP's girlfriend. She said that it's not extravagant gifts that mattered, but the little things. Oh, like the little human-sized bear that you want. Or the jewelry. That sure, maybe a little in size. I'm so confused. Like how she spent over an hour picking out her outfit whilst I just showed up in clothes that I was wearing at work. I pointed out that I live on the other side of the city, and if I'd gone home to change them, our lunch date would have been a dinner date, which would have been cut short because of her curfew. I don't know, I feel like she's just mad that she didn't get a bear. The rest of that date was awkward, and any time I tried to change topic, she brought it back to my incomplete gift. By the end, I just wanted to go home. That's so sad. You do a nice thing for somebody, and they're like, I want that nice thing, but I'm not gonna please you for that nice thing, because you didn't get me this other thing that isn't <laughs> a rule that you should get. Now I know that the gift wasn't a traditional gift, I kind of feel like shoes are a traditional gift, right? Like, you're telling me that Gabrielle Solis, yes, I'm rewatching Desperate Housewives, the traditional women don't like the idea of being gifted shoes for Valentine's Day. I would think that shoes were a very girly thing to gift someone. And if the remit of shoes that your girlfriend likes is sneaker shoes, then it's an appropriate gift. It doesn't even need to be shoes. I don't know what I'm trying to reason for this. You don't need to just get people cuddly toys or jewelry for Christmas, but Valentine's Day, Vampire's Day. Oh my god, this video is just chaos. I'm so sorry. OP saying, I know it wasn't a traditional gift, but I thought since it was something that she's into and wanted, it would be okay, but now I'm not sure. Should I have gotten the traditional teddy bear or jewelry? Am I the drama for getting her? What I thought was a thoughtful gift. No, OP, oh my goodness, you're so not the drama. You are not the Valentine's Day drama, and I'm so sorry <laughs> that this is occurring. How bizarre. I <laughs> What's really bizarre to me as well is the idea, like it's, it's the audacity, the audacity of Opie's girlfriend to be like, you got me the wrong gift. I still want it. And you need to get me another one that's more expensive. I've not seen that before. Kudos, kudos to your girlfriend because that is some level of entitlement. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I think I'm too spicy to be filming this today. Oh dear. Oh well. It's the little things that matter. Like the human sized teddy bear. Not the drama. Not the drama. What did she get you? Good question. I would have pulled them sneakers out of her hands and bounced so ungrateful. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, would she also think that jewelry and cuddly toys is what a what a guy should get for Valentine's? Or is it gonna be like aftershave and a belt or a watch? <laughs> I'm trying to think of like super manly gifts, socks. Socks are a very manly gift, aren't they? Opie responded and say, I got a grooming kit. Oh. Why didn't I think of that before? Shower gel, cologne, and some chocolate. I liked it since I was running out and it saved me a shopping trip. I just, I'm so, I'm so bamboozled by this partner. Are you supposed to hook the shower gel? I think different rules apply for girls and guys in this scenario. I don't know where non-binary people fit. I'm sorry, in this very blinkered view that OP's girlfriend has of <laughs> Valentine's, where you can't get people what they want, but what you feel you need to, even if they don't want a millionth blushy. <laughs> Let's move on. I, I can't see any world in which anybody would say that if he's a drama there. Am I the drama for baking a recently single friend heart cookies for Valentine's Day? That's cute. Some backstory says OP. My friend, 23 year old woman, was dumped by her boyfriend, 26 year old man, of four years a few weeks ago. Oh, that's a long time. That's tricky. They lived together and everyone was pretty convinced that they were going to last. She's obviously devastated and is somewhat fixated on the possibility of getting back together, which is unlikely. On to today, she's been messaging me all morning about how upset she was and how she's alone on Valentine's Day. So today, whilst baking romantic cookies for my significant other, says OP, I made a few extra to give to her. These were all heart-shaped cookies, one of which said, I love you, the rest were pink 
and blank. That's adorable. That's a lot of effort to go to for Valentine's Day. Props to you for being a cookie, a cookie, a cookie mama. That is something else. That is awesome. I thought this would be a nice way to show her that she still loved and had support. That is so adorable. When I got to work, because we're also co-workers, but we were friends first, I handed her the cookies and I said, I love you. I hope these help a little. Oh. I didn't mention baking for my boyfriend, anything romantic or anything else. And she immediately started crying and telling me that it was so inconsiderate to do this. Oh, I apologized and I gave her some space. <laughs> You're being so kind. She's being so mean and you're being so kind. Later on, our boss came up to me and agreed that it was cruel for me to mention love today and to rub my love in her face. I'm honestly so confused about whether I'm just missing something here. So am I the drama? I'm confused too, babe. Yeah, I'm, maybe I just don't understand love. Maybe I don't understand how relationships are supposed to work. You did a cute thing. You did a kind thing. You're so, so not the drama. You made cookies for a friend. The cookies that say I love you. I'm so confused. I also have questions. Is your boss also friend first and foremost and then employee or employer, I guess, later on? Because if not, isn't it a bit weird for them to overstep and be like rubbing your love all over her face? <laughs> like, what are you? doing rub my love in her face it just sounds so wrong i know that's not what we should be focusing on it's what my brain has latched on to go away go away in all seriousness you did a kind thing valentine's day is about love right so why can't it also be love that's not romantic between couples why can't it be friendship love why can't you just like it's, it's like saying oh you can't say i love you to a friend who's been broken up with anybody because it will remind them of any love they've ever had and therefore they're gonna get really sad. I think the friend is just upset because the friend is upset. It's reminded them of that. Anything would have reminded them of that. It's Valentine's Day, which clearly means a lot to her. She said that she's worried about it. You could have farted in her cushion and she'd have been like, oh, my boyfriend used to do that. Like, there's just nothing you could have done where you could have won in this situation. She was hurt. She. She, she put it out on you. You even apologized. I'm just really hoping that she's gonna wake up tomorrow and be like, I'm sorry, I've reacted. Your cookies is very tasty and I'm very, very grateful for your uh, friendship and baking skills. That is the only appropriate move from the friend at this point. But I really don't think they're in the drama. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Am I being too harsh? Maybe I'm being too harsh. No, ooh, no drama here. You were trying to do a nice thing, but it's easy to see why getting a bunch of heart-shaped cookies on Valentine's Day after being done by your partner in four years would upset someone. Yeah, okay, all right. I was gonna be like, is it? If you're in the wrong headspace, I could totally see why things would set you off. It's like if a pet died, right? I, I, sorry if that's a weird comparison, but I would be in a really bad emotional state if I lost, I'm trying to think if I lost someone, but not someone because I don't want to put the omen on that but I've just put the omen on my cats my point remains you know like if, if if that happened any small thing would set off my feelings I could see someone with a twig on their jumper and be like oh, I used to get fluff on my jumper from my cat do you know what I mean like there are ways that your head will make anything in the world surrounding you remind you of the thing that is right at the forefront of your mind so I get that I get it I still don't think that you were the drama and I mm, do I change it to no drama here? No, because the boss is definitely drama. And even though she's in a negative headspace, which I can appreciate, you can appreciate being sad. It can not be your fault, but it's still your problem if you're treating other people with disrespect, especially when they're going out of the way to help you. So me with my spicy brain right now, you are still the drama friend and you are definitely not the drama OP. I'm, I maintain my conviction. Not the drama. That was actually a really nice gesture. I totally agree. And if anyone would like to send me a pink or white uh, heart shaped cookie in the post, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Hang on a second. <laughs> Still good. Am I the drama for buying a PS5 from a scalper for Valentine's Day? Ooh, this sounds spicy. Let's see. I should also note that this one, because this is from a compilation list that I found on the internet of Valentine's Day topics to talk about, this specific post is from like three years ago. So we need to rewind our minds to the time where PS5s were actually really hard to get hold of. Are we ready? Let's settle in, let's go. Since late January, my husband's been absolutely obsessed with getting the new gen gaming systems, the new PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox. Are you a gamer? I'm a gamer. I'm very invested in this conversation, particularly the ones around scalpers and like how tricky they make things just generally. I feel like the music industry has really gotten a good hold of that like understanding how tickets should work and i think that that's only really happened because musicians with a lot of influence have made their voices very heard ed sheeran when he was like all the rage was like make sure you do not get scalp tickets if you are not the original holder of the ticket you will not be able to be let into my show and it totally shot 
scalping down. I think because of a lot of artists talking out, the platforms are like, wow, no, we really need to pay attention to this. And they've now put things in place to kind of stop that from happening as much. But other industries, especially in things like tech, really need to get like a, a, a handle on this because it can get really bad. And don't get me started on toilet paper. During the pandemic, we're not even gonna go there. OP says he didn't see his pre-order invitation in November and has now consumed his life to the point where when he hears a phone notification indicating console stock might be available, he'll drop whatever he's doing, unless it's something sensitive like a work meeting with his boss, to check. Honestly, I think he's become a little obsessed. Well, I figured, says OP, since I hated seeing him so stressed and Valentine's Day was coming up, I'd save some extra money this month and I'd buy a PS5 from an online reseller. I'm of the philosophy that money buys convenience. I presented it to him that morning and he was over the moon when he saw it and asked me how I got it, so I told him the truth. As soon as he had that, I paid a 60% markup for it. Oh! His face dropped. Wow. Sorry, this isn't me judging like based on opinions. I think where I'm standing right now is like, mm. I was gonna say you do you, your husband has his point of views, you have your point of view, but I can see why your husband's upset. And I can, I can see if maybe why you didn't know this isn't your fault. <laughs> I'm still formulating this part of it. My pain is at the pollet. Wow, 60% mark up. Is it, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking this to mean that you paid 160% of the price. And these devices aren't cheap. That's a lot of money. Wow. Over the next few hours, his mood worsened until I asked him about it. And he told me that people like me are enabling these leeches and parasites, his words, to harm his gaming hobby community. And that he was extremely disappointed in me and he wouldn't be playing that PS5. Oh, all right. First, I don't, I'm just gonna say it. I feel like you got a good egg there. For a partner to want something so bad, not partner, but anyone, to want something so bad and to have it and have like a moral compass that is so hard where they're like, I now have this thing that I wanted, but it's gone against my moral code. So I can't play it. I just feel like that indicates something towards the moral compass of the person that you're with. So I think that's very sweet. Just wanted to put that out there. Let's read on and then we'll make a final judgment. He ended up moving the box to the closet and wouldn't even look at it. <laughs> the temptation. And he's been pretending to be drowned in work. We both work from home. I tried asking my mum and sister, but they just told me he should be grateful. I was so thoughtful and spent hundreds on him. You are being thoughtful. You have spent a lot of money on him. He still isn't talking to me, save for really short answers to my questions. Am I the drama? I'm gonna say, no drama here. That is my badge, no drama here. And this is why the issue with scalpers is a big one. It really is. It's frustrating because it makes things inaccessible. If people who are so buttholy and are gonna buy things literally just to profit extra, like who are you to do that? You haven't made it. You are taking away from people who actually use the product and you're just making it more inaccessible. And I guess in some ways, like the companies that make the products don't care because they're like, well, my product's still being sold. I don't give two craps if it's being sold to someone else who's now gonna sell it for even more. I've made my profit. But morally you should care, right? Because you are making that product so inaccessible to so many people, it's affecting the community that's able to then build a loyalty with your brand, which I think ultimately, you know, does harm the brand itself. And also creates like this extra class divide. Like we don't need that in things like the gaming community. Everyone should just be having fun. There's enough politics in so many other aspects of the world. If people wanna play games, let people play games. So I, I hear it and I'm kind of feeling that you know, like scalping was always an option for your husband anyway, to just go and get it. If he's been that obsessed with checking the notifications each time, there's a reason that he also hasn't just popped online and bought it because he clearly wants it so much, right? So there's a bit of me that feels like maybe OP should have known, but I also see that you were just trying to make him happy. And you, from what I'm understanding here, had no idea about like the damage of what scalping can do <laughs> and how against it clearly as a matter of principle, your partner was, you were just like, hey, I'm gonna spend lots of money on Valentine's. I'm gonna do this really, really nice thing for you. So that's why I don't think you're the drama. But I also don't think OP's partner's a drama because I feel like his reaction is justified in the sense that He's just upset that it's now so within reach, but he can't use it because of a moral dilemma. That would make me so sad too. So I can see where you're both coming from. I'm really interested in what other people have to say here, honestly, because I, I don't know. I wonder if a part of me feels like maybe OP is the drama a little bit because they should have sort of made the connection as to why they weren't just going online and getting it from a scalper themselves. Um, not the drama, says one commenter. I would resell the PS5, take the money and do something nice for myself. Yeah. I mean, you could, except then you would also be scalping. <laughs> Unless you took it 
and then you sold it for the retail price and not a ridiculously high marked up scalp price, but you're not gonna do that because why would you? That makes no sense. And then your partner's still not gonna be with a PS5 and she's gonna be sad that the scalper still profited <laughs> unnecessarily from scalping. Oh my gosh, I just realized why the word scalping is called scalping because they're like taking some off the top, right? That's so dark. It's so dark, dude. Anyway, filing that thought away for another day. I really feel like at this point, the best thing to do would be for your, ah, oh, I know, I know. I know what you can do. But you can't get rid of the PlayStation because the PlayStation is already there. And as we said, it's, you're just gonna be adding to the problem by scalping more if you try and get rid of it. What you should do is let your husband have a PlayStation, but the amount extra that was paid for, he could donate or you could donate if you're so inclined to a charity that can allow other people to be able to access tech things like old versions. Or you could do that and also donate any old consoles like a PS4 if he doesn't need that anymore to someone who really wants a gaming console, but you know, isn't so intent on getting a PS5 specifically and whose day would really be made by getting a free PS4. That would be my thinking. I feel like that would probably be the right way to go. And then in the future, just don't buy things from scalpers again. Not the drama, you did something kind and generous, unless you made it clear that he wouldn't want a PS5 bought from a reseller, you did the best you could. I guess that's the point that I'm thinking of, like, did he make it clear? Shall we see? Ah, uh, did you know how he felt about scalpers? OP says he's complained about them making it harder to find a PS5 before. So you did kind of know. Oh, it just makes it so difficult because if someone else has done it, it's not like the scalper's gonna take it back. <laughs> That's not how scalpers work. There's no refunds on these kinds of things. Oh, it's really tricky. What do you think, Peaches? Let me know. I think I'm, I am veering more on no drama here, but if I was ha to have to go to a badge where we were placing blame, it would be more you are the drama than it would be not the drama. Let me know your thoughts though. Really intrigued, really intrigued on this one. No drama here, what you did was amazing, but he's not wrong. If people stop buying from scalpers who are selling them for 150% markup, 160, <laughs> they'd stop doing it and they wouldn't buy all the stock when it's released just to resell. It's true. We don't wanna be part of the problem. We wanna be part of the solution. And you are kind of educated on that being a problem. And hell is paid for good intention. So goodness knows, goodness knows. You are the drama, but you mean well. If he was obsessed with this and willing to buy from scalp, then surely he'd have done it already or it would have come up. Jay, the more I'm thinking about it and the more I'm seeing these points, I'm maybe feeling more towards you are the drama, but maybe like a little you're the drama, a soft you're the drama. Not the drama, I understand why he's frustrated with giving those jerks money, but it's already done. It's sad that he's just ignoring it after you spent all of that money on a thoughtful gift. I kind of get this, but I also kind of don't because if there was something that was so immoral that you didn't like you wanted but you felt like you couldn't do say you were boycotting a huge company who were doing bad things and you were like oh i really want this thing but I... say you were being vegan right for for january and you were like this is really important to me i want to i want to do veganuary right this is the impact that i want to have this month please support me on this and your partner went you know what babe i can tell from your eyes that you really 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 wanted a beef burger and so I bought you six Big Macs and I would love it if you ate them. And you were like, deep down, maybe this is what I want. I would really love to eat a Big Mac, but I feel like I can't because I'm doing this thing. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I told you that I couldn't do this. That's what this situation is giving me. You could say, well, you know, the money's already bought. It's not like I can go and refund the burgers just because you do it for January. But at the same time, does that make it feel any better to eat it? That the damage has been done. You're the drama, all that time, energy and stress he's put into trying to get a PS5 and has been spent fighting scalpers and you completely invalidated all of that effort and empowered his enemy. All right, empowered his enemy sounds a bit harsh. I, I mean, where is the lie? I see you, but I also think that it's a bit Lord of the Rings <laughs> situation that is very much more Bill and Ben, the Firepot men, you know? Please do let me know your thoughts though, Peaches. I wish we could do polls underneath these videos, honestly, wow. Okay, one more Valentine's for the love and the plushies and the plushies and the love and the love. Am I the drama for dropping someone from an event because of her new boyfriend. Oh, intriguing. I can't gauge the context of this one from the title. Let's see. I'm a 29 year old man and I've been single for about a year after a long term relationship ended. With Valentine's Day coming up, some of our other single friends and I have decided to do a singles only trivia and bar crawl night. I see where this is going. There are six of us set to go and others are invited, but we are limiting it to single people. So there's no pressure or awkwardness. And let's face it, 
most couples have other Valentine's Day plans. A few nights ago, my friend Sarah, 37 year old woman, posted something on Facebook about something that her boyfriend said. I didn't even know that she had one and she's never talked about him before and has no pictures of him on social media. I asked Max and Jamie who helped organize it what to do and they said that we should talk to her about it. According to Sarah, they started officially dating really recently, but it's a long distance relationship where he lives about two and a half hours away and they only get to visit with each other every other weekend. We told her that whilst I'm happy it's working out, it might be best if she sits the trivia bar crawl out. I'm assuming because it's like a singles only and you're now like, well, you're not single, so why? I'm questioning, did she not mention to you that she wasn't single initially? Because that sounds a bit weird to me. If they were like, hey, we're doing a singles night and you were in a relationship with someone and you were like, yeah, I'm coming. Like, surely you should be like, I'm in a relationship, but I'd love to come. And then you could have had that discussion before you were invested in going to the event. Maybe you weren't in a relationship at that point though. Maybe it was planned in advance and now it's more recent that you guys have gotten together that I would understand a bit more. Would I then feel a need to say something? Is there any chance that you're gonna bring the boyfriend to the event? And are you the kind of person that would end up talking a lot about relationships? Cause that's what they don't want from a singles night out, right? Let's read on. Oh, I'm in two minds. Gosh darn it. If these situations were easy, we wouldn't be having to go to the internet to ask for advice now, would we? Sarah was really upset, saying they're putting Valentine's Day on hold till she can visit him. And she was really looking forward to this event. She asked if we could please make an exception, swearing that she wouldn't talk about her boyfriend and he wouldn't be coming. Okay, so she's confirmed. I'm not gonna talk about love. I appreciate and respect that this is a single event. I certainly won't be bringing my partner. I'm gonna be alone on Valentine's, please let me come. <laughs> we said we'd do another one open to everyone later that both of them would be welcome to come to, but this one was a special case. <sighs> Let's read on. In the days since, Sarah's been giving us all the cold shoulder. Max feels bad saying that we should invite her for part of the night so she won't have to spend the day alone. But Jamie says that that defeats the purpose since she has a boyfriend now. I feel bad too, but as we told Sarah, she is welcome at something different. This one's just for single people. Am I the drama? Ooh, 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 ooh. How do I feel about this? Okay, my thoughts fork. There are two directions. Those directions depend on what the Valentine's Day singles night pub crawl's purpose is. Is it so that people are not lonely on Valentine's Day? Like people who don't have dates out with their partners or mushy dushy lovey dovey whatever and therefore have other people to spend it with because they're being but like not able to be mushy dushy lovey dovey with a partner, number one? Or is it that you're gonna go out and like do the whole, oh, single people rule, people in relationships draw, you suck cause you found love and maybe I don't want to, or maybe I'm here not by choice, but we're gonna all like hate on you because you've got partners and we don't. <laughs> exactly like that. I'm here for a good Galentine's. If you want to go out and do like a friendship thing on Valentine's Day, if you want to do a Valentine's Day thing specifically for single people to like show friendships and the importance of non-romantic relationships, amazing, beautiful, cute. But if it's like we are doing this because we hate on people in relationships, it comes across a bit butt hurt, you know, and I feel like it's a little bit childish. <laughs> I've not actually seen these sorts of things in real life. I've only seen those events on TV, in fictional media. But um, yeah, if they exist, that's the kind of thing that I could see Sarah not being able to be invited to. But assuming that it is like just a mature, hey, you know what? Everyone's busy on Valentine's. And so let's go do something ourselves so that we have something really fun and don't feel pressurized to mope by the ridiculous capitalist society. Then invite Sarah, babe, because she's alone too. And she said that she's not gonna talk about partners. But I do also see the other side in that it's a singles event. I do question if Sarah is treating the event with like the respect that it's required to. I should also say this also only makes sense, right? If at the beginning she wasn't in the relationship. If she wasn't in a relationship and was like, sure, I'll come to a bar crawl and just didn't mention that she wasn't single. I think that's a bit weird. And then you wouldn't have been the drama. But if she got into a relationship afterwards, I just feel like it's okay to make an exception in this case. I don't know why I'm specifically saying that. Mostly because she sounds like she's being really considerate. I wonder what her partner would think, long distance relationship or not, about her going to a singles event. And that's the point, right? If it's just you and your friends going out and having a great time, then like do it. <laughs> it doesn't need to be that deep. It doesn't need to be a big deal unless the event is making it a big deal, in which case maybe Sarah doesn't want to go to one of those anyway. I'm gonna say, oh gosh, I don't know. What is wrong with you, Badge? Mm. You are the drama. You are the drama. I'm sorry, that's my badge. 
Yeah, I'm basing that, uh, look, I, I see it from the other perspective. I can see people going, well, hello, this is a singles event. Why are you saying someone's a drama when it's a singles event and they clearly don't meet the criteria for being single? I see you, I hear you. Am I being that walking cliche that's saying that rules are meant to be broken? Maybe. Am I simply saying that if this was the situation that I was in, knowing that I wouldn't be organizing an event that was like, oh, people in relationships suck because that's not the case. And it's just, you know, like different life paths that we're all on, you know? And really what the intention behind this event is, is to create a cute little event for people who don't go on the mushy Valentine's dates are, in which case it makes sense that you'd make an exception because Sarah's partner isn't there she's not going to talk about a relationship and she's going to be one of those lonely people on valentine's which is why you set up this event because you don't want people to feel lonely on valentine's then yeah you're the drama for not including her in that situation and that's how i would act i think mm, do you agree let me, let me know let me know downstairs just be kind that's all i ask whenever we share our opinions it's okay to have an opinion it's okay to have an opinion that differs from mine my opinion is my opinion it's not the right opinion it's just my opinion so voice yours go ahead just do it kindly all right should we see what other people have to say ooh, ooh, ooh. i'm intrigued you are the drama. You're making an event for people who might feel lonely on Valentine's. You're leaving out a friend who will definitely feel lonely on Valentine's. I feel like that was said very eloquently and I like put two waffles in the oven for, for us to get there. This is so childish and mean. <laughs> Someone else has said, I actually can't believe this guy's almost 30. I mean, I mean, do we need to be mean? No. Do we see where they're coming from? Maybe. <laughs> you are the drama. Is it a singles event or an event for people who are alone on Valentine's Day? This this is the difference, right? She'll be solo that day, not going out with her significant other, so it would not be a couple participating. I agree. Unless you're gonna go there and be like, oh, my boyfriend, <laughs> photos, photos, photos. But she said that she'd be respectful and not do that. So, you know, I don't see how her presence when she knows not to speak about couples is gonna be triggering to single people on Valentine's Day. You are the drama. Don't leave the poor girl alone all day on her own. I'm sure she can keep her mouth shut for one day, especially since she's kept quiet about it until now. Good point you didn't even know she's in a relationship she can do it really well <laughs> Ooh, not the drama if some of my friends are having a specific party i'm not going to try and join if i don't fit the criteria you are the drama you sound jelly not the drama it's an event for single people she's not single these are the two camps criteria jelly what are you team jelly team criteria let me know i also really like the suggestion from the friend of she could come for some of it she doesn't need to come for all of it maybe that's a good compromise so that if you do if you are concerned that other people might feel some kind of way and be stifled by her relationship presence because you know we ooze a different scent those of us in relationships somehow <laughs> then um yeah maybe maybe that's a good compromise going forward i don't know oh my goodness i feel like this was a really tricky one i, I didn't expect it to be but thank you for joining me if you did enjoy it maybe consider giving it a thumbs up subscribing if you want to see more it really helps me out and just a reminder that you too can pick up this gorgeous wild deodorant of love the details are downstairs in the description box thank you for joining me on another video peaches be kind and have a great day bye